never used to gab, so um, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and get started. And the way that we start a board meeting is we start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So if everybody oh, can rise, to you, and we'll do the pledge, all right? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, everybody can have a seat. This is very exciting. I don't think we've ever had this large of a board meeting before. So, and it's and it's all for good things. So that's a good thing. Okay, with that, we have a, a few recognitions tonight for some state and some national championship awards, and we're going to start first um, with a junior from Highlands High School. Her name is Michaela Reichert. So come on up, Michaela. Michaela um, won the indoor track and field shot put state title, and she set a school record in the process. Her 36 feet, three inch toss set the new school record and it replaced a record that had stood at the high school since 1979. Wow. So, <laughs> so with that, Michaela gets one of our state champ t-shirts and winning isn't everything, it's just how I roll. So we want to congratulate her. We have a certificate for her in the t-shirt. Oh Congratulations. So Good luck with the track season out awesome. for state championships. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have our third grade team come up first and we're going to let you guys show us your big trophy, show us your model, and then we're going to, each one of you is going to tell us your name and, and what you did on the team, if you, can, if, you can, if you know that. Yes? You have a third grade and fifth grade team mix and the fifth grader is from Warrior, so it's a Johnson and Warrior team mix and I want to make sure they were all represented. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. I just had Johnson. So it's else. Johnson and Warrior. So Come on up, third graders and fifth graders. You might as well I'll come up too, and we'll all just come up together. How's come that? on up and make a line. You can go to the end. There. Make a line. Right here in the middle. There you go, guys. There you go. Come on, you're fine. Come on, students. Let's try to get all of you on the All board right. Row. You guys want them all up here? Why don't you come down to the very end? The beautiful dress. You guys come down to the very end. Scoot on down. There you go. Isn't it great to have all these champions? You know, I mean, this is a great problem to have. Correct. Right. Okay. Well, Dr. Labor, Dr. Labor is going to put the mic in your in your face, and you can just tell us your name, okay? And what grade you're in? How's that? And what school? Since some of you guys are from Moyer as well. And you won't hear the mic. It's for the camera, it's not for the, for the camera. Surround. Okay. My name is Bella Anglin, and I go to school at Johnson Elementary, and I designed the props for our play. Very good. My name is Luke Lehman, and I made the grant the grabber for our play. My name is Devin McKim. I go to Johnson Elementary and I don't know. <laughs> You're just all around good kids. Yeah, yeah. Good. yeah we're just all around good kids. <laughs> speak up, speak up. Hi, I'm Nathan. Um, I go to Johnson Elementary and I'm in third grade. It's perfect. You're doing great. My name is Jack Wilson. I go to third, uh, I go to Johnson and I'm in third grade. Um, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> my name is Emily Winters. I go to Moyer. I'm in fifth grade. My name is Braden Taft, and I go to Johnson, and this is the uh, Bear. We are the Johnson third and fifth grade team, coached by Sarah Wilson, Sarah Taft, and Mike Anglin. We won the state, competi state competition with a total of 350 points and no penalty points. Our problem was problem four, lose your marbles in division one. This problem required teams to design, build, and test a structure made only of balsa wood and glue. That will balance and support as much weight as possible. The structure also held five marbles, marbles that were released during the weight placement as a result of a team created, created device removing a piece, from, a piece of the structure. After the crusher board and one additional weight were placed on top of the structure, the first marble was released. 
After the next weight is supported, the team used its device to release another marble, and so on. This, the team incorporated the weight placement and losing your marbles into the theme of the performance. Um, well, my name's Elijah, and I'm a, I'm a fifth grader at Johnson, and I sort of did every, like, combined everything in them. Um, my name is Taddy Sieverding, and I'm a fifth grader at Johnson, and I mainly did the subtitles. My name is Gus Larder, and I'm a fifth grader at Johnson, and I was, well, the villain in the play. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Case Grio from, uh, from Johnson Elementary in the fifth grade, and I designed the apartment building. Um, my name is Samuel Contreras. Um, I'm a fifth grader at Johnson, and I played the villain's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my name is Robbie McCam. Um, I go to Johnson. I'm in fifth grade, and I was the director in the play. Um, my name is Ivan. And I'm fifth grade in Johnson, and I played the old lady in the play. Nice. <laughs> all well, congratulations, guys. We have certificates for all of you. I see that you guys have some of you guys have your medals. Is that what you guys received from the yeah. Odyssey yeah. of the Mind competition and the big trophy as well? Yeah. Well, congratulations. You represented our school district really well. I can tell that you guys worked really hard too. Is this the model that was part of holding yes. the marbles? Well, it's it's a replica. It's a replica. Yeah. Okay. Great. It has less sticks in less than the marbles. Awesome. Well, you guys did a great job. And what I'm going to show you is, you guys kind of set a, a precedent for the school district because we have state championship T-shirts for these kind of guys because we usually have high school state championships. We don't have elementary school state championships, so you guys, we had to order special t-shirts for you, and they're not in yet. So, you all will get a state championship t-shirt, but they're gonna be in next week, okay? And your coach will have them. So, what I'm gonna do too, is I'm gonna give these to you. These are state championship certificates too, and we congratulate you, and we thank you for representing our school district so well. Great Congratulations. Job. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Odyssey of the Mind, you guys can, you guys are welcome to head on out. Or you can stay. <laughs> Was your arm tired? You guys are on So this is the end It's a happening place, isn't it, Brent? <laughs> a lot of champions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. It is awesome. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. on this dance team as well. I know Bradley has been active in, and Mr. Wire as well. Um, this, these teams have come in the last eight, eight years. Where's Aaron? Eight years? Aaron's not here. Aaron's not here. Um, eight? Nine. 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 Is this ninth year? Ninth year. Okay. <laughs> this, is, this is Dr. Farley's right here. Um, nine years we've gone from one varsity team to now a varsity team, a JV team, and a middle school team. Um, we're, we're going to do this. I'm going to announce the awards that each team won. I'm going to have that team introduce themselves, and then we'll go on to the next team. So starting first with our middle school team. How many, how many 
How else do you have? You have 28? 20. 20, sorry. I was like, another big, 20. Okay, the middle school dance team at um, the Jam Fest Grand Nationals Championship, which was held at the convention center in February, they won the national championship in variety. And then this past weekend, because of their results in, 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 at the convention center, they got to go to Indianapolis. So all three teams went to Indianapolis again this past weekend. And the middle school team this, this weekend won first place in hip hop and second place in palm. So congratulations to all of them. Introduce yourselves, tell us your name and what grade you're in. How about that? And then stop at the, at the end of the middle. I'm Caroline Bucher, and I'm in seventh grade. I'm Cassidy Peterson, and I'm in eighth grade. I'm Molly Faring, and I'm in seventh grade. I'm Lexi Fitters, and I'm in seventh grade. I'm Katherine Rose, and I'm in seventh grade. I'm Kylie Shulman, and I'm in seventh grade. I'm Addie Kane, and I'm in seventh grade. I'm Alicia Combs, and I'm in seventh grade. I'm Tara Casebolt, and I'm in sixth grade. I'm Megan Ellison, and I'm in eighth grade. I'm Megan Pointer, and I'm in eighth grade. I'm Lizzie Roding, and I'm in seventh grade. I'm Lauren Hellman, and I'm in sixth grade. I'm Kayla Bowling, and I'm in sixth grade. Great. Now that's the end of the middle school team, right? Okay. Now our junior varsity team at the Jam Fest Grand Nationals, they won in Palm, Variety, and Hip Hop. This past weekend, they came in third place in Palm and Hip Hop. So congratulations, <laughs> girls. That's a good idea. Yeah, JV, do you guys want to come down in front of this table yeah, come now? Come on down. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Same deal, girls. Name and grade. Um, I'm Claire Snyder, and I'm in tenth grade. I'm Lily Hennigan, and I'm in eighth grade. I'm Taylor Hergett, and I'm in tenth grade. I'm Madison Boberg, and I'm in ninth grade. I'm Kelly Menser, and I'm in ninth grade. I'm Sophia Magnette, and I'm in ninth grade. I'm Katie Bucher, and I'm in ninth grade. I'm Ansley Grimm, and I'm in eighth grade. I'm Lucy Johanneman, and I'm in tenth grade. I'm Carson Schell, and I'm in ninth grade. I'm Alex Fisher, and I'm in tenth grade. I'm Addie Paris, and I'm in tenth grade. I'm Brenna Payne, and I'm in eleventh grade. I'm Emma Banks, and I'm in eighth grade. I'm Hannah Schwalbach, and I'm in 8th grade. I'm Audrey Gray, and I'm in 8th grade. I'm Mallory Hill, and I'm in 8th grade. And last but not least is our varsity team. So Kirsten, if you guys want to, I don't know where I can, here we go. We're, 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 yeah, we're, we're moving them down. down, so you guys down, come down, down here. Kind of fill in. Um, our varsity team in February, um, they won the variety and hip hop. So. All of, and what you all should know is pretty cool. They all got national championship jackets, which are quite coveted. Uh, um, so I think they're pretty wow. excited about it. And then this past weekend in Indianapolis, they came in first place in hip hop. And I understand that they had a score of 90. Is that right? So they're in the running to win all of hip hop amongst the other competitions that are going on across the country. So congratulations to them as well. Kirsten, you want to do you have the mic? Yep. Go ahead and start us off. <laughs> okay. I'm Kirsten Peterson, and I'm a senior. I'm Haley Hennigan, and I'm a junior. I'm Carly Hill, and I'm a senior. I'm Addie Sparks, and I'm a senior. I'm Jillian Malloy, and I'm a senior. I'm Hillary Gadd, and I'm a senior. I'm Ellie Farley, and I'm a junior. I'm Alice Roding, and I'm a junior. I'm Emily Kemp, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Bella Keller, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Amanda Boring, and I'm a freshman. I'm Emily McCoy, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Abby Wire, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Bethany Griffith, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Lydia Erickson, and I'm a sophomore. <laughs> Congrats to all of our teams. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we all, you guys will all get state championships. I realize you're national champions, but we don't have national champions t-shirts, so you guys get state champions. There's a box with certificates and t-shirts that your coach will have. So um, as you can see, we have a wealth of dancing talent in this, in this district, and um, these fine teams represent that. And so I congratulate all three of the teams. In, um, and they now have a beautiful studio to dance in. And they have a studio, too, right? yes. Right. So okay. right. there's a studio yeah. in the, in the right. field house with mirrors and everything and its own sound system. So congratulations. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Parents right. as well. You guys are free to head on out. Thank okay. you. Great job. Thank you.
came and got it. So somebody with them is going to walk around. Don, I think somebody with the film team squad is going to walk around with it. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we're trying to make it look Fill in the seats, please. It's, it's, we need some up front. Come on, guys. It went from a really big crowd to a not so big crowd. This is the way it works. It is way. They all think they're going to hang back there, huh? I can at least have the administrators come up front. Do, do you really do for them now? You know what the problem is with this, this big room is that they want to hang out in front now. We should be okay. It's up to you. Probably. Okay. Probably. Are okay. you want to go? It's okay. You know, no, as long as, as, long as there is anybody here for that, I don't know if there is, but if there is, as long as we just hear them. Okay. Um, are we moving to one okay. technology? Or? Are we what? Well, we stay here. We okay. Done for them. okay, right now, um, I'm going to open it up. You, because we had so many kids, we, we did all the recognitions first. Um, usually we do our community forum first. So um, I'll open it up now. I know Mr. Cooper has something to say. So um, our community forums, if anybody has any questions or concerns or anything um, that they would like to address the board, feel free to now. Go ahead. Okay, great. Well, Here, yeah, let's get. He does. Oh, that's okay. he does. Speak well, he does. Yeah. No, he needs the the guys need him on the. Oh, here we go there. Uh, Here, here we the go. Mic. There Where's you go. The you get the mic. There you go. Right. I got you. Thanks. Uh, I'm Brent Cooper. Uh, I have two kids in Fort Thomas schools. One in fourth grade and one in eighth grade. We've been blessed with some awesome principals over the years. Uh, Jay Brewer and then Mr. Hescamp and Mr. Gatz. Appreciate all you guys do. Uh, the, fee the reason I, I wanted to speak today was I want to share a story of what happened a little bit late last year that I'm, I'm a little late getting here to tell you this story. So last November, it was November 8th, November 10th, somewhere in that ballpark, I get a call from Mr. Haskamp, principal at Moyer, telling me that my daughter had fallen from the top of the monkey bars or whatever it was. It was a bad fall on her head. They immobilized her, kept her still. Um, called the EMS, called the fire department. Fire department was boom, Johnny on the spot. They put her in one of those immobilized things. It was scary, you know, uh, where she can't move. Um, and Mr. Haskamp calls me, says they're on the way to the emergency room, but it, he thinks everything's fine. But what's going on in my head is, well, not that, you know, they can't be that sure if they were immobilized and so forth. So I was freaking out, of course. He's like, calm down, everything's gonna be fine, it'll be good. Um, her teacher, Mrs. Heilman, who is awesome, by the way. She held her hand the entire way to the hospital in the ambulance, rode over with her. Mr. Haskamp followed him in the ambulance, you know, or followed the ambulance to the hospital. Then I'm on the way, because I was, I was about 20 minutes away at a, at a meeting. Um, Jean calls me, says, Brent, I heard what happened. Let us know if you need anything at all. So um, everything worked out fine. She got x-rays, she was good, you know, the doctors were great. The reason I'm here today is just to tell you, because you, you hear a lot of negative stuff from time to time. I want to hear, have you hear some positive stuff. We were really grateful for the staff, um, the way they handled it. Um, Mr. Haskamp gave me insurance forms. Now I'll tell you the insurance was uh, crazy. Not your all's, not the school district's fault. It's, uh, I have insurance for my company, I own the business. You would think I'd, I'd have better insurance than my employees. I, I think I do, but um, but it was crazy navigating those worlds, you know, on, on all that. But that's a separate story. He he did everything they could possibly do to make it to make it okay. And I I mean I, I get choked up. I'm I'm doing good tonight, but I get I got really emotional uh, that day. And and so I was I wanted to wait for tonight because I was hoping that I could come here and and say that UK won a national championship too. But that didn't work out for me. It's all right. I I'm over it. Um, but you guys, I can't say enough about our superintendent. He really is a blessing. Um, the principal, and I understand we're getting to keep Mr. Haskin, but he's going, uh, moving over to another spot. So I'll, my daughters will continue to see him, which is great. And I wanted to say something about Mrs. Heilman too. So thanks for all you guys do and thank them. If you would find a way to, to privately or publicly acknowledge that, that they do a really good job for us and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's really nice to hear that about our staff. I mean, we pride ourselves on having some of the best staff in, in Kentucky, and we know that. The best. And it's nice to hear that um, that reassurance and, and, and that from a parent who has experienced something like you did. And thanks for coming and taking the time and telling us. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, Brent.
Okay, um, are there any other community forum questions, comments? Okay, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Getz. Well, it, it's our spotlight tonight and um, we're really happy to have everybody here. Um, I'm really glad you had the meeting here. Uh, the, uh, the investment that this community has made and the board taking the leap of faith with the digital conversion this year, it has gone, from a principal's point of view, in kids, kids learning and the teachers teaching, it has gone better than I think you would ever have thought it would have gone. And uh, tonight, you'll just see a, you know, a snapshot of some things that are going on. But it's not just, it's not using the device. It's, it's a whole integration of, of integrating technology on how we're teaching and how kids are learning. And I think it's really important that the community sees that this major investment really, really is worth it. And we're getting kids ready, you know, to work and communicate and live in a different time than we all grew up in. And um, where's Doc Labor? I was going to turn it over to her and because uh, she, she's uh, arranged all this back here. But again, it's um, we're we're redefining how, how we're doing things in, a, in going places that, you, you know, our kids never thought, our teachers certainly never thought we'd be going. So. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to bring the mic over to the students. They're gonna, the teacher is going to introduce what you're going to see at the collaboration station, and the kids are going to introduce themselves. And then we're just going to ask for the audience, whomever wants to, board members especially, we want you just to go pick a station and, and go to it and just watch what they're doing. These things are things they're doing in the classroom. We didn't ask for anything different than if you're doing something between now and April, please let me know because I want you to share it at the... Uh, at the board meeting so there's nothing that's been manipulated to look better than it is this is what we do every day and we're really proud of it so it was a very easy to get ready for you guys and you can just come over whenever you're ready if you don't want to we understand but we'd love you all I'm Susan Anderson and I teach seventh grade life science and uh, the two things that my students are going to be showing today is Bryson uh, is going to show a little bit about a new delivery system where um, the students can go into um, a project and work independently or in groups and work at their own speed. Differentiation is really key here and the, um, the assignment can evolve uh, as they go into it. Sophie's actually going to show you one of the assignments that they made this way, which was an iMovie that the entire class uh, put together. It's about an hour long and it shows all the different biological events that happen through geologic time. And she's just gonna show you her little segment of it. So introduce yourselves, guys. Um, I'm Bryson Huddleston and I'm a seventh grader. I'm Sophia Stiles and I'm a seventh grader. Hi, my name is Kathy Donnellan, excuse the voice. Um, I teach sixth grade math here at Highlands Middle School. Um, this is actually a project we actually completed back in second quarter um, where we had came to the library to use the collaboration stations as kids discussed a project they had started independently and then worked to pairs and then worked to a whole group. So I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Leah Whalen. I'm a sixth grader. Hi, I'm Kama Wolfenbarger and I'm a sixth grader. Hi, I'm Sam Burnham and I'm a sixth grader. Hi, I'm Samuel Valls and I'm a sixth grader. Hi, I'm Lisa Berkeley, and I have eighth grade English, and we discovered that this would be a great place to revise uh, first drafts of whatever piece of writing we're working on at the time. Uh, so the students get a rubric, um, and it's the same thing I will use to grade, and then they go after each other's papers. And they're usually a little more harsh than I am. So um, it's, it was awesome to see them do that. They were fully engaged the whole time, and I think it worked out for their benefit in a lot of ways. Hi, I'm Betsy Sellers, and I'm in eighth grade. Hi, I'm Zoe Barth, and I'm in eighth grade. I'm Lillian Reynolds, and I'm in eighth grade. I'm Claire Tinkler, and I'm in eighth grade. Um, I'm Audrey Gray, and I'm in eighth grade. I'm Holly Workman, and I teach uh, sixth grade or science. Uh, the kids had a project on weathering and erosion, and they were able to uh, present their project in several different ways. Um, one group did uh, Minecraft, another um, 
did it with Legos and another student did it using a uh, chalkboard and they just showed how erosion occurred and how it affects the land. Hi, I'm Sam Grau. Hi, I'm Michael Mulligan, I'm a sixth grader. Hi, I'm Emma Horton and I'm in sixth grade. Hi, I'm Nathaniel Vera and I'm in sixth grade. Hi, I'm Mason Heithouse and I'm in sixth grade. I'm Teresa Bradley and I teach seventh grade social studies, which is ancient history. And we do a lot of research. And so in our classes, we have uh, some projects that we do. And the students here this evening are going to be showing their infographics. Usually when you think of ancient history, you think of writing research papers and writing reports. And this was just a different way of using the technology to um, share what they had learned about ancient history, in this case, ancient China. So the students are going to be sharing how they presented their new knowledge and information. Um, hi, I'm Davis Rec. Hi, I'm Claire Bushman, and I'm a seventh grader. Hi, I'm Zoe Poff, and I'm a seventh grader. All right, so we'll let you guys get to it. Prepare to be wowed. We were doing a new thing that's called blend space, and it, sh and it helps us helps us work on our own pace while other while. And she has different, four different, three other different sections, and you can choose which section you want. So, say I like connect with art, so then I can choose connect with art for B two. some parameters and if I would have signed it like here would have been where I would have like wanted them to be but when they did it it went here because they were creating it wasn't me putting any kind of limits on it. Now blend space you guys are eighth graders? This is probably a lot simpler too what you learned about this is this is she's in fourth period. Or Magnus is in fourth period. Bryce is in second. So they weren't they didn't even they weren't contained by the class period. So if you want to X out, if you want to see the entire class period, like right here, X out of that box. So there's like. Let me, can I just say that that was really, really uh, was I was going to say the same thing to Mark I'm and glad we Dawn. Came to do it because that made yeah. all the difference in the world. Huge I didn't really difference. even get the whole collaboration I station thing and all that stuff, but wow. Yeah. 
a little scary, to be honest with you. I mean, I they're a amazing. Worried that the middle schoolers are going to be they are help, jobs someday. outdone us already. They know more than the teachers and then the adults on the Apple. They know everything there is yeah. to know, and they're learning <laughs> with true. it. It's pretty cool. I look back on, I mean, what was it, a year ago in February that we went to North Carolina? When? 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 In April. Was it April, April that we went? Yeah. So it, it has, it's just now yeah. been a year, and this is what we've accomplished in a year, and now we have a thousand more that have been delivered. A thousand twenty, excuse me. <laughs> I knew Miss McGee would know. I just want to add, we, there's there's Apple TV in every classroom, and basically what that allows us is uh, this, it allows a student and teacher to project whatever is on their screen to, to whatever projection device they have in the classroom, so that so that everybody can can understand. One of the big fears were kids were going to learn in isolation, and we've really developed systems yeah. to make sure that doesn't happen. That's what I was thinking too. Is it, it seems like all this technology inhibits their communication skills because they're just focused on that personal whatever it is every day. But this is a whole new world. No, I, really I, I mean, I specifically asked the students that I was talking with at the math station, do you find yourself working with students more and collaborating more this year? And they all, all four of them resoundingly said, absolutely, yes. Right. I mean, Which is uh, a big part of our mission statement. Correct. Right. Vision, yeah. I mean, as you said, Brad, you would think that they're just focused on the box, and yeah. that's not what this was ever about anyway, and th this really makes it come alive really cool to understand that. it. I told them that they had to speak to the board because those are the people that make decisions about technology and about many other things, and they need to see, you know, these decisions are hard, and they need to see where the money's going. And one of them immediately said, are they going to take them away? And <laughs> 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 like the pressure was on them. <laughs> if they do poorly, they well, lose yeah. the computers. I did ask the, the four at the table. I asked none of the four of them had had their own computer before. And I said, so are you going to miss this this summer? And all they were like, oh. yes. <laughs> so they'll, they'll actually be excited to come back to school in order to get their equipment back. So um, thank you both. I mean, I, I agree this was the right place to do this, and it's so exciting. Mr. Robinson will look forward to having one like this next year up at that other building. So, um, yeah, it's really exciting. And I must say that in Mr. Getz, we understand that you've announced your your retirement, and we haven't had a board meeting since that has happened. And so, um, sad to see you go. We, 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 we haven't accepted it yet. No. So, well, Thomas School has um, been very good to me <laughs> and my children and family. So, well, thank you. we thank you for your service, and you've done wonders for this building, and um, we appreciate it. So, well, and, and to that on that point, I would like to say that you know Mark and Don really uh, what you saw tonight is is all them. You know, and and they're taking this larger vision and and creating a you know a vision for this this school um, you know un, under that umbrella and uh, because you know we take no credit for that we we provided the MacBooks and the and the the network and you know and and talked about what we wanted to try to accomplish you know with it and and you know we're not totally there yet but um, but they have done a incredible job really in, in uh, getting the faculty to buy into it and and developing a vision within this school uh, you know that that those outcomes that you saw tonight really uh, that, that represent the, that vision so it's it's been uh, it's been really work well done mark and you know we appreciate it and I, I you predicted this when we decided to go this and I, I can see it happening where schools are there are going to be schools that come here to visit us like we went to North Carolina. That just proves to me, I mean, and we knew that this would be a learning curve, but what you guys have shown in a, just a year is unbelievable. And so we, they will come and they will want to come. So um, congrats to all involved. Look forward to seeing it at the high school next year too. Okay, with that said, Mr. Wisman, we're on to construction items, and um, we're on the high school renovation phase four. Um, thanks to everybody who participated yesterday in our open house for the field house. Um, had a great crowd, great turnout. The community really came out to, to support it, and I think everybody was very pleased to see it. So, Which the uh, first agenda item here has to do with the field house. There are still a few items uh, that have to be tied up, things that were mostly exterior site work that we had to wait on the weather. Um, obviously, uh, people <coughs> who were at the open house saw most of that work that was done. Blacktop's been done, landscaping's been done. Um, some additional landscaping was actually completed today with some trees on the hillside. Uh, the fencing around the maintenance area is due to begin shortly. There's a little bit of work that needs to be done on the turf field, the grass field down there in terms of getting that still ready to go. 
uh, we hope to allow um, scheduled use of that field uh, with the beginning of June. So that's kind of the target date we were given by the company that installed the irrigation and that field. Okay. So there's a few small things left to be done, mm -hmm. but for the most part, they are all scheduled and moving along. The facility, as Karen indicated, got rave reviews yesterday. Mm -hmm. People loved it. It is scheduled um, as much as our most heavily used facilities at this point. And we have a new employee who is mm -hmm. helping us with custodial. Yes. Um, with, with that added square footage, it, it put us over the threshold to hire another custodian. And Guy Ponder was hired for that position. And he has other duties in addition to the field house. But so far, he's done a great job uh, maintaining that facility. And we'll continue to do so. Great. We do have a pay application for Century. And it's in the amount of $26,092. Okay. Did you want to say something? I just wanted to say about the field house and the reaction yesterday on the part of some of our community members, folks who, who don't even have uh, children in school and, and really haven't been engaged in some of the conversations. And, uh, you know, those of us in the room, I mean, we, you know, we had a concept of what it was going to be, you know, long before it, it took, it took, uh, it came to fruition, you know, but, uh, Several folks who were there yesterday were just in total awe <laughs> of that facility and what it and the possibilities around that, you know, for our kids. And that's just uh, the reaction. It was just so neat, really. And Joe, you know, I mean, you know, we thank you know you for that and your design work. And you know that uh, it was just so neat to see that reaction amongst uh, you know uh, community members who are you know 65, 70 years old and just never dreamed that something like that could be here you know, in this community for our kids. And so it was really, you know, it was pretty special, yes. actually. It was yes. pretty special, I think. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, I think a good portion of the, the people that came through yesterday were not parents of kids. Mm -hmm. I, no. I, and I, I think a lot of them were yeah. community members that, that have been active in Highlands in the past, but mm -hmm. not necessarily have any students still in our system. So it was nice Absolutely. to see. We had an alum from 1968 who was, uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name now, but he either. was a men's basketball coach at Rhodes College in mm -hmm. Memphis. Had he recruited just happened, Stephen Qualinek. He just happened to be in town and visiting his mother and came through and was just, wow. He was the first one, I yeah, think, he to was. come through. Yeah. You know, he was just wild by it, yeah. Okay. Um, I need a motion and a second to approve pay up number 12 to Century. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. On to the gymnasium phase four. And this portion is moving right along. It is uh, several people who attended the open house yesterday got to peek their <laughs> eyes in on that work. Um, demolition underneath the gym is complete and they're working rapidly on the installation of utilities that go underground, particularly plumbing. Uh, they've made great progress on that in the last week. Uh, and we'll continue to do so. Uh, this week they were going to start uh, infilling and putting in what will serve as the concrete floor down there over the top of that plumbing. Up top, there is no more balcony in the gym. It has been removed. So those that were used to seeing that balcony, they will no longer see it. Um, there have started on both levels with some ductwork installation. Today they started <laughs> removing the roof of the gym lobby. So they're moving right along. We have, as always, our weekly progress meeting on Tuesday. So we'll get further updates on schedule tomorrow afternoon, but things at this point seem to be moving along quite well. Great. Okay, and we have a pay at number one to Century for that project? $224,190. <clears throat> well, good to go, right, Jeff? Okay. I need a motion and a second to approve the pay, pay app number one to Century Construction. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. This says a pay app to ACM Construction as yes, well. Yes, pay app to ACM Construction. They were the company that came in and, and did hazardous materials abatement that had to be done before Century could begin their work and then some in conjunction as they opened up walls to remove material that we could not get to prior to the demolition phase of this project. Is that so all that needs to be done? That's, that, that's all it? that needed to be okay. done. So they are complete, and so their pay application will be 
100 percent eighteen thousand five hundred dollars okay i need a motion and a second to approve the payout to acm construction so moved second all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed okay now on to the field turf project which we have a lovely view of it yes you have a tremendous view of the progress um, what you don't see is some of the work that's been done a lot of the work that had to support uh, drainage uh, in terms of the major rerunning of some of the sewer lines is essentially complete at this time and has already been infilled and covered back up um, you can see a little bit of what will be a trench drain along the building that they have uh, don't have quite complete yet they did lose due to weather a few days of work last week but uh, they felt like that's not going to have a huge impact on the schedule um, we are expecting delivery of the turf uh, in early june i believe that's to our location it has to go to Mota's shop for a few weeks first for prep work prior to them bringing it on site they did tell us last week that we are scheduled to be the first field that they're installing this summer that will arrive which is always a good thing yes so. Did we uh, do we remove all the drain pipes from underneath there? Except for drain. They they have uh, the plan was to cut out um, eight inches, um, which we estimated was the existing layer of sand and gravel. Um, they've gone down that eight inches, which meant they removed 100% um, of the drainage under the field that was in existence. We are using some of the underground storm sewer lines that were there, and then we've added to that and changed some to rectify some of the um, issues that we had in certain areas, particularly this corner um, of the field, so that this field drains better than the previous field. But so they, it will have all new underfield drainage. Did they camera all those older ones to make sure they were good? I mean, is there any question at all that anything we tied into the ones that we could not? Properly? There was one line that ran. It runs underneath the sewing lab that we could not verify 100% by cameraing it. So they have rerun, and that's part of the reason we have that trench drain. That was part of the plan to rectify that. That's mm -hmm. not a deal. Everything's going to drain. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Great. Great. A lot of what they're tying into is the sewer work that we did a couple of years yeah, ago. So it should yeah. be pretty fresh. So, and you can, if you look out there, you can see some new, um, you know, drains that will be at field level um, in the concrete and blacktop area that they've installed to help drainage in those areas will feed into that storm sewer. Okay. So we will have essentially almost all new storm sewer as part of this project. Great. Once we're done. Okay. I need a motion and a second to approve PAP 1 to MOTS. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next construction project, Moyer Next Elementary. project is Moyer. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I'm going to turn it over in a second uh, to Joe so he can show you the schematic designs, which um, for people that have seen them, they are highly impressed. I think you will be too. We have been doing a number of small things to facilitate this overall project in terms of test borings for <coughs> um, geotechnical um, and a lot of stuff on the architectural engineering side of things so people have seen a few people over there surveying shortly they'll see some people over there drilling some holes and at some point we'll have to do a test hole 500 feet deep for geothermal so they'll see some stuff over there this spring before school's <laughs> out or see evidence of some of this work going on Okay. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Joe so he can show you the schematic designs. How does that kind of start? Yeah. Project. Mm -hmm. um, before Joe gets started, I just uh, want to mention to the board one of the things uh, you, you are, uh, we are asking you tonight to approve the, the design development drawings, and we'll be submitting those to the Kentucky Department of Education for, for approval um, in the next mm -hmm. few days to get that process going. Uh, one of the things that we thought we might do tonight, but we're not, we're, we're unable to do, is to, we, you, you may have re remember that I had uh, suggested that we might want to try to uh, do a separate bid package for the mobiles, okay, uh, in order to expedite uh, the construction of the mobile village, if you will. Uh, but we're not able to do that, and, and the reason that we're not able to do that is money. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, because 
what I had failed to consider is how we were going to pay for that, <laughs> that uh, because of the fact that we don't sell the bonds until until the actual project you know is approved and gets started and and so you can't do the mobiles ahead of that because you have to have a bunch of money to to do that and uh, I just didn't really think about the fact that you know uh, the bond sale can't take place until we actually uh, do the bid for the you know the full project so well considering that part of it's going to be probably about a million dollars uh, you know for all the infrastructure underneath and so on and so forth that just made that undoable so what that does to us a little bit uh, it, it's not it's a little bit problematic from a timing perspective because we're probably not going to be able to get those mobiles in there at the beginning of the summer basically is the, is the bottom line we're, we're just not I mean uh, the, the project itself will have to be out to bid and approved and then we can go with that and, and all be paid for out of one pot of money from the SFCC Correct. so want to make sure you understood that that's uh, you know a, a little bit of snag but you know hey it's uh, it's money from heaven, you know. <laughs> we, we will <laughs> okay. deal with the snack. It's money from heaven. <laughs> what's that? What's that do for your timing then? So. It, well, it it does. Uh, it puts us in a situation where it might be difficult. It probably maybe impossible to actually move into those mobiles before school starts. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you know, I'm not 100%, you know, saying that can't happen, but it probably not can't it probably can't happen and and so we may be looking for instance at an October that that uh, date in October where we have the four day weekend in October we could have some transition then maybe uh, Christmas break we could have transition uh, it just depends we'll, we're just going to see how that works out but it it um, you know you know we had the right idea uh, we just didn't have the right finance plan <laughs> for that idea okay. so Ready? Thanks for these, Jeff. These sure. Nice. This is a rendering of the um, rear of the building. I guess one of the challenges was is to kind of create two fronts to it, and I, I think we've done a great job at that. Uh, it's, it's really exciting. Um, you can see the, the side to the left, uh, back on the distance, that is the existing school, and there's a three-story kind of classroom addition uh, that you see like where the bus is at over to the right. Everything uh, blends in very well. It has the same Art Deco kind of style that the existing school has. Uh, and then right in the middle is the kind of, it's the uh, two-story Art Deco glass entry tower. That'll be a big, um, it'll kind of have a skylight at the top of the dome with a big M or something possibly in it with a kind of a floating stair, which takes you to all three levels of the uh, academic wing. Uh, then off to the right is the Art Deco barrel vault um, cafeteria piece. It has a large M there possibly, kind of like the H on the field house, which could be kind of a neat, you know, to mm -hmm. Do all your schools like that? Mm -hmm. uh, Could you say barrel vault ceiling one more time for Mr. Pinnell, right. please? <laughs> <laughs> Not flat. Yeah, I actually yeah. added that yeah. in there just for yeah. breath. Yeah. Yeah. The, <laughs> the entry tower, the uh, gym is in the very distance, uh, you know, like down towards uh, James Avenue. Cafeteria is off to the right, and the kitchen is that uh, one-story piece uh, to the far right. You can see where there's a access loop where the parents can t uh, come up, drop the kids off to the. Uh, the uh, plaza there go right into the main entrance and there's some parking don't know exactly how many uh, spaces but off to the right there so everything off the square in the front is new everything behind the square yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is on or this corner here back right oh, from that corner wow. so in the middle of it this l-shaped piece is, is brand new okay that's the corner of the existing 50 building back there uh, okay got it okay. so i mean it's this is an l yeah, it's an L-shaped okay. piece there. Mm -hmm. uh, go and go to the next one. Okay. This is a view from uh, Highland Avenue. It's, it's kind of um, not 100% accurate because there's those three houses that actually block right. this view. Uh, but there's the gym back beyond. Um, you'll you'll kind of get a glimpse of it if you're standing there at the corner of the intersection. Where, uh, it, says, where it says gymnasium there will be the playground. Is that, yes. That's yes. right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and there's that garage there from that house kind of right in the foreground. We just didn't show that. And off to the right is the existing school, uh, which will be fully, fully tuck pointed. It'll have uh, all new windows. I mean, just basically a, a brand new building. Joe, is there an entrance anywhere off of that gymnasium out into that playground area? Is yes. There is. Back. Um, oh. Go back one more. 
right, right where the uh, gymnasium kind of tucks into the back of the 50s piece, there's a double door there. It kind of leads right off that main corridor. Okay. So the kids can drop down there and come right off the building. And our, I guess the front steps, we really can't do oh, Do we have any ramping or anything? We that studied we're, that and yeah. I came up with a bunch of designs and we can get it to work, but it's really uh, invasive. I mean, it's, okay. it's big, it's bulky. It kind of, it could kill the trees. I mean, it, we don't well, it probably would be very, it's, it's going to be pretty right. limited there. Right. We'll just hit handicap access off the well. back entrance. Right. There's an elevator back in there. To where, I mean, that, right. All right. You, you can do visitor parking there. Gene and I talked. Like you could yeah. have a. Uh, is that going to? Should we make that the main entrance? Will that be the main entrance? Well, it, it it is actually uh, that will be the main entrance for pick up and drop off, uh, and I think what what we will have to do at Moyer um, is communicate, you know, very well with our community that anybody that needs handicap accessibility needs to come to that entrance. We'll place handicap parking right outside that entrance. We'll put a buzzer on that door that buzzes the main office with a camera. With a camera, such that if someone comes that needs assistance, uh, Miss Lawless will go back there and assist them. Okay, <laughs> all right, okay. And uh, you know, I mean, I think that's just the way we have to handle it. I mean, it was going to be the ramping system to get up that front. Uh, because of that's seven feet high, I believe, isn't it, Joe? It was like 75 to 80. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it yes. had to be like 70 feet of ramp down and elbow back. To, it, it was just, it was really going to ruin the look of the front of the school and for very limited use. And, and we thought, you know, we have an elevator that's right down a straight shot down a for hallway. Sure. We can put a buzzer and a camera in and, and cover that base in that way. I hope you're okay with that. Oh, but, no, that, I mean, that's I, fine. I, th I think it's excellent because it really would. Yeah, think, it would take, take away, away from, from that whole front of the building. That, right. and that's really what it's all about at that location. Right. This is an overall site plan. Highland Avenue is on the right side. Uh, and you can see the, the vertical kind of zigzag red line. That is, that's the... Uh, the piece on the right is the 30s piece, which is fully renovated. Everything to the left of the red line is all brand new construction. Um, you can see the cafeteria kitchen on the far left. Gymnasium is kind of the pink square right in the middle. Uh, and then again, there's those dark blue classrooms with that L-shaped piece. Um, again, we were able to get the all the first, second, and kindergarten classrooms on the first floor, which is great as far as access to the playground. Uh, and all the other levels are on the second and third floors. This is the second floor, uh, top right and middle, kind of the purple areas, that's the new admin area. Uh, bottom right is the new computer classroom. Uh, right in the center is still the media center, but it's, it's gonna be expanded to where we're gonna open the uh, stage back up, get handicap access for it, raise the ceiling up, put windows into it, new skylights. Uh, and then again, there's that mall corridor in that kind of yellow mustard color. That's gonna be a two-story space. It's actually gonna look down into the gym and cafeteria space. Some kind of a into it. Uh, very far left is a big open stair, similar to Woodfields, but it's going to be, it's going to look different. Uh, and then, uh, very far left is the elevator. So as soon as you come into the entrance tower, if you're handicap accessible, you come by the elevator and then just go anywhere you want to go. This is the uh, third floor, very top. Uh, this houses the fourth and fifth grades. Uh, in some yeah, resource classrooms. Uh, again, everything left of the red line is brand new. Uh, and that can actually, um, it'll have two stair towers, it'll have its own restroom so that can function for the full year that the existing 30s building is being kind of torn apart. This is Brad's favorite, this is a roof plan. Um, <laughs> show, showing, all the low slope, laugh, yeah. <laughs> showing all the low slope no, areas of the 30s building. Uh, no, and, and we try to create as many barrel vaults, towers, and things in the new construction just to try to help drainage. Uh, and we are going to so. kind of double the slope of the low slope <laughs> areas. Typically, it's a quarter inch per foot, which is very flat. We're going to make them all half inch per foot, which will really help the drainage. Uh, you won't get all those puddles that you see up in there. All puddles end up as leaks, eventually. And they do. Did, did you add the slide just for him? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the honesty, Joe. <laughs> I am taking some heat tonight. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. Thank you. I mean, Pretty awesome. Yeah.
I mean, I mean, the thing I love about it is I think it incorporates things that we learned from Woodfill and that, that work really well. But this is Moyer. This is very unique. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's its own building. So I think it's great. And somebody made the comment that it's a shame that from the front of the road you're not going to be able to see this. But I mean, you got to keep in mind every parent that drops their kid off is going to come up. It's going to come up entrance. that. It's right. not like it's like a back of the building. It's right. the front. Right. school. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that same thing, but you know that's kind of what we we want to do there, though, is, is just continue to maintain that integrity of what's there now. We don't want this big monster school to jump mm -hmm. out on Highland Avenue. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and we're going to match the brick perfectly. Uh, all the limestone carvings are going to be the exact same on all the corners. We're going to, mm -hmm. like I was going to take one of them down, have them measured, and actually, you know, so they can recreate them. Are you uh, confident that the the brick on the the 30 st structure will? Um, Will clean up to look. Oh yeah, you we're know. gonna get it all uh, pressure washed, tuck pointed, and waterproofed. Mm -hmm. We had a structural engineer up there with a, a lift. He checked out every steel lintel above the windows. Uh, there's maybe about 30 percent of them. That he's gonna have to pull out and then put back in, and then mm -hmm. tooth all the bricks back in. Um, yeah. Good deal. That looks great. Awesome. Thank you. It's very good. It's so exciting. Thank you, Joe. It looks great. Thanks for the opportunity. Gene, going back to the timing thing that we were talking about, so if the uh, if the mobile units are pushed back a little bit, does that mean the construction will go with it, or would you start like the tear down of the gym and all that, anyways? Um, it probably will mean the construction will be pushed back a little bit. You know, I would think as well. I, it, um, I, you know, I just didn't envision the the actual cost that was going to be associated with that and, and the fact that we would have to have that in cash if we were going to do it as a separate bid package. You know, and we're not used to being in the situation. Normally, when we do a project, you know, we've got a, a million dollars of local money in it, you know? And so if, and if, if this was our normal project, we, we could do that. <laughs> we could do that. But this isn't our normal project. This is all, for the most part, all, you know, money coming from the state. And so... Uh, we didn't adjust to that concept when we were thinking about doing two two separate bid packages. We did because because it's probably for the the mobiles and doing the geothermal wells underneath them, running mm -hmm. the electric and the water. It's it might be a million and a half dollars to to do that. And we you know obviously that we didn't have that cash. Some of that's around. geothermal and stuff. Right? Yeah, that's it's not geothermal. All it's, it, it's no, it's a I lot of that is sewage and everything that needs to be run for the project, but needs to be run under where those mobiles are going to be. It's a million dollar trailer park. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pinnell. Well but said. it's well necessary. Said. <laughs> well said. Only about six hundred thousand. Do we need to uh, approve this tonight? It's a million dollar temporary trailer. It's, it's, temporary. <laughs> it's a mobile village a mobile of village. learning cottages. It's no different than the than the village we had at Woodville. I mean, it's the same village we had at Woodville. That's right. So it's basically the same. I didn't like it. Nice it was a nice village. <laughs> um, do we need to approve this tonight? And then what's the next step from here? Next month. Set of drawings, which will be the design development set, okay. which is like 50 percent, and then after that, uh, there will be the construction document set. Okay. So still got two more. Okay. Great. All right. All right. Well, I need. If there are no further questions, I need an emo a motion and a second to approve the schematic design for Moya. So moved. Second. second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Good stuff, Jeff. Thanks. 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 Nice work. All right, Jerry, I think you're still up. Custodial supplies bid documents. A couple items non-construction related tonight. As we do this month every year, we bring to you the construction or custodial supplies bid documents. We do this every year, um, put out um, the vast majority of products that we use in the schools out to bid to try and get the best pricing we can. When we did this process last year, our overall total actually dropped a little. And some of that was because, you know, and, and we may experience a little of that again because a lot of things we buy like uh, garbage can liners and things like that are petroleum-based products. So there are a number of things that, you know, when we go back and forth, there are times that, that becomes very financially beneficial to us. Um, so we do do this annually. We get the, the bid documents approved at the April meeting, send them out to various vendors, get them to price everything, and then we'll come back to you in May for approval of the, that pricing to take effect July 1. Okay. All right. I need a motion and a second to approve the custodial bid documents. 
So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> okay. Mr. Wisman, you're still up with the Next, YMCA Joint Facilities Usage also Agreement. There's another annual um, April meeting. Uh, we do each year have a Joint Facilities Usage Agreement with the YMCA. Um, it covers facilities of ours that the Y uses and then YMCA facilities that we use. So uh, essentially the major pieces of that are the use of Woodfield Elementary for summer camp for the YMCA. Um, it usually contains use of the football field by the YMCA for <laughs> soccer, but we're unable to honor that request <laughs> this year. And then um, we do, as part of that agreement, get essentially free use of their swimming pool for our swim team for our practices. And there's a couple other little tweaks in there for some things that we kind of add in. Um, the end result is the YMCA this year will pass, uh, I believe it's $10,500. Usually it's $12,000, but because they aren't going to be using the football field, we've taken $1,500 off of that. Okay. All right. I need a motion and a second to approve the joint agreement with the Y. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> okay. I think you're done, Mr. Wilson. I believe I am. Mr. Stratton. Amended school calendar for 1415. So moved. This too is something that we seem to do every year. Um, <clears throat> so we just need to amend our school calendar for this year to, uh, I guess, notify the state exactly what we've done after we've done it. Um, the, uh, let's see, you notice we've had uh, four days that we missed, uh, the entire days, and they're listed there February 17, 18, 19, and March 5th. Uh, and you can see, uh, again, the corresponding makeup days. We had six days at the end of our calendar designated as makeup days, and so we'll use four of those. We had two days <coughs> that were, um, we had an hour delay because of uh, weather conditions. Um, the flip side of that is we had four late arrival days already in the calendar, and the days we missed were close to the scheduled late arrival really days, close. so we just really flipped those. Mm -hmm. So uh, really those two days are kind of a wash for us time-wise. That's all we need to amend and it looks like we're in pretty good shape. So June 2nd's the last day of school. I've June had lots of people ask. I'm like, well, if you seconds, look at the calendar and yeah. you, you figure that out, but do we have something that's going to go out to parents that just, whether it's an email or a tw tweet or something that we can, just now that we're through <laughs> tweet that we can. Now that we're through the bad weather. Thank you. We'll, uh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, we well, and that, and, that, and that the board and the board has made and the board has this, done this. Approved right, this. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, we can do that. And Mr. Robinson, graduation is now June the seventh, correct? Mm -hmm. And then I had somebody in the community ask me when baccalaureate was. So it's two weeks before graduation. <laughs> okay. Things, Things that are already reserved. Okay. All right. So baccalaureate didn't change, but graduation moved a week. Thank you. All right, I need a motion and a second to approve the amended school calendar. So moved. Second. So, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Mr. Kirshner, the employee, employee wellness incentive. Well, as you know, the last uh, several years, uh, we have encouraged our employees to participate in the Firecracker 5K as a, as a way of encouraging employee wellness. Um, the board has... Um, you know, agreed to, to pay um, their entrance fee into that event. And last year, I believe we had uh, over 90 uh, folks that participated, and we've had as many as 100, uh, which is, you know, a third of our, our staff, basically a third of our employees. And that, that, that's pretty good participation. And in addition to the, the wellness component, uh, you know, that's one of the biggest events that this community has. And, uh, uh, being a part of that and showing, you know, all of us out there wearing our, our colors and, and uh, you know, being engaged in the community in that way on that day is, uh, you know, I think that's a, that's a, a visible, you know, sign of our, our presence and our commitment to the community. So I would encourage the board to consider offering that incentive to employees again this year, and, and we will begin to promote that if you should do so. Good. I think good. it's a good idea. So Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 
and the bond of the treasurer. As you know, the state of Kentucky uh, requires uh, that our treasurer be uh, bonded uh, against any potential loss. Uh, uh, we uh, do carry a $300,000 bond on uh, Andy, and that cost about uh, $473.37, I believe, okay, to provide that uh, $300,000 of bonding. And also do, uh, we do, in addition, um, provide it for Jan Heilman, who does accounts payable for us as well. We're not required to do that, but, but we are required with the treasurer. So I would, I would recommend that the board uh, approve the payment to ensure that uh, our treasurer is bonded. Great. Is that enough, Andy? Yeah. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. <clears throat> okay. We're at the consent agenda. Agenda. Man, my tongue, tongue tied tonight. Uh, I need a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Any other business? Any announcements for the schools? It's May. It's coming up April, May. I know proms this weekend and, I, you know, everything's going on at all the schools. So um, where's the year gone? Okay. We're adjourned.